How to think going guys, welcome to a brand new video here, I'm the new retro gamer, I hope you guys are well, welcome to the first reaction video of a brand new week, today we're going to be watching another old episode of Kenny Chris, today it's his video on Shoe a Little 2 for the Playstation, um, I actually remember when this fi film came out, I believe it was Michael J. Fox was Stuart, I think it was Gina Davis played the mother, and then you had Hugh Laurie playing the father, I uh, can't remember the name of the kid. I know he grew up to be absolutely fucking jacked. I heard, I heard he, he got into fitness and stuff. So, today we're going to be watching uh, this video of Caddy Chris. So, the way we're doing my reactions is, don't forget guys, we're doing three reaction videos. We are, we've got three a week until next week, and then it all changes from next week. Um, so, yeah, it might have changed already by then, by the time you guys see this, guys, because... Uh, I recorded all those videos way in advance. I'm recording this closer to time. So, let me know, guys, in the comments below if you have seen Shoot Little 2. Did you enjoy the film or not? I also remember the cat. I remember Snowball. That's all I remember from that film. So, are we ready, guys? Three, two, one. Shoot Little 2 for the PlayStation. Like, share, come, subscribe. Let's get on with it. Let's go. Also, do check out my other Let's Plays, my football manager, my Eastside Hockey manager, because I've been obsessed with management sims the last two, three weeks. So I've been really obsessed. So, anyway, let's go. And now, an in-depth analysis to the history of Stuart Little 2 on the PlayStation. Once upon a time, there was a lovely little movie called Stuart Little that was, mmm, okay, I guess. And because of that overwhelming response, they made a sequel, which was, mmm, yeah, it was better. But the rest of the world didn't think so, because it only made, like, half the money that the first film did, meaning that the third film was straight to DVD, and, mmm, yeah, it was shit. But why am I even talking about that? I mean, fuck, I have to go back to Stuart Little 2, which, yes, didn't do as well as the original, so they decided to make a PS1 game about it. It makes sense to me. Why'd they, why'd they do that? What's the reason? Well, I'll tell you what it was. Because one day the Queen of England saw the movie and was like, Mmm, yes, this tickles my giddies. And they went all the way to Magenta Software before they made fucking Buzz Junior Jungle Party and said, I want to play this shit on my PlayStation, you hear, you hear? And please make a box of noodles sound like this when you push them. And then the game happened. The end. And here's a video about it. That didn't happen, guys. Uh, I know the Queen did play the Nintendo Wii a lot. Uh, Her Majesty did play the Wii a lot when she was alive, because she's, what? God, it's been 15 months now since she's passed. Yeah, so, yeah, she um, she had a gold, gold plate in Wii at one point. That's 100% true. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kadekura Show, where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not a game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. Oh god, you know something? Who remembers all of those months ago in my Crash Team Racing video when I said I'm scripting the video for Stuart Little 2? Well, it was kind of a joke, and everyone in the audience should have gone <laughs> But you didn't. You actually wanted me to talk about it, so all I can say is I'm sorry it took so long to get to this point, but you know... See, that's the only problem about YouTube. If you mention something on a video, your follow followers, subscribers, viewers expect you to do it. Oh wow, this video was a long time coming, but here we go. Stuart Little 2 on PS1. If you haven't seen the Stuart Little movies before, you aren't missing too much, honestly. They're enjoyable family movies based on a book character that's a mouse living in an ordinary suburban family. The sequel especially, I think, is really good, and it's got yeah. an all-star cast from the likes of Michael J. Fox as Stuart, James Woods as a fucking falcon. Oh yeah, James Woods is in it. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. I know he played Hades in um, uh, Hercules, uh, Disney's Hercules, but I will always now know him for the guy who goes, ooh, piece of candy, ooh, piece of candy, from Buddy Family Guy. Hugh Laurie, Gina Davis, and even Jonathan Licknipple. And this was before... Oh! Oh, he looked like this. Childhood tainted. Like the... What did I say? I, I knew he got jacked... He, 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 bu he bulked up. I know, I know it was Jonathan something. I couldn't remember his last name. I know, I know it came with L. I couldn't remember what his last name was. Um, yeah, I have, yes, I have seen, yes, I have seen Stuart Little too. I actually really do like this film. To be honest, I, uh, I, I, I was what eleven when it came out, so I was a little bit on the older side. 
but I did enjoy it. The beginning of this video made a little too obvious. I have no idea why this game exists, who asked for it, and which people thought the companies could squeeze money out of when the second movie did only half as well as the first one. But here it is, and it's... <laughs> Alright, actually. It's a 3D platformer very similar to the likes yeah. of Mario 64 for its open-ended and explorative level design, collectathon gameplay, and completing certain objectives in order to receive this game's equivalent of stars, jeweled ring. And if you look at this purely as an entry-level Stuart Little kids game about collectathon platformers, it's actually not half bad. I know what you're thinking though, why are we grabbing rings though? Because the evil pre-mentioned Falcon is obsessed with jewels and forced a bird friend of Stuart's, Margolo, to help him steal many of them around town. Yeah. The evil Falcon's been forcing me to steal jewelry for him from the people of New York. I want to stop, but I need your help. <laughs> really? That's what they all say. Also, yeah. I'm calling bullshit. Stuart definitely would have died just then. He'd be red ooze on the carpet by that point. Speaking of, if Stuart Little was to ever break a leg, would he go to the hospital or the vets? <laughs> Think about it. So Stuart... He'll get a he he would go to the vets because he's an animal. It reads Margolo's note over asking for his help, thinks about it for a bit, like, <laughs> I don't know. And then goes ahead and decides, ah, fuck it, it's my day off, I'm going to bed. Okay, but this already <laughs> makes no sense at all. If we're collecting all of these rings around the house, does that mean that Falcon actually hasn't stolen these ones yet? Or, or did he drop them? Or does he like being Charles Manson and just move things around the house while people are gone without taking anything? I don't know my enemy and I don't like it. While we're on the subject, look here, why can't the little family help me out here? They could reach on the top of that clock easily. And my God, Margolo has the tip to tell me that I need a key for these chests when she can fly. She can easily grab the key herself while I'm buggering around with skateboarding on a boat full of discarded nappies. Congratulations. And she got a broken wing, though. I'm pretty sure she, uh, in the uh, film she's got a broken wing. Stuart, you've completed the course, so you've been awarded a jeweled ring. Oh, okay, okay, wow, so now you're rewarding me with a ring. You were keeping that to yourself until your precious little monkey went around on a train track picking up fucking stars for your torturous enjoyment and then decide whether or not I deserve the ring. I thought you wanted them back. I can't- My precious! I can't trust you. I can't trust anyone. I fed up with this war. <laughs> okay, I'm overanalyzing. It's Stuart Lee. You're tearing me apart, Lisa! Let's just enjoy it. Okay, so it's one of those games that forces you into an unskippable tutorial right at the very start, and immediately Margolo is chowing down on my face. Lovely. If you press the jump button during the first jump, you will jump again while in midair. Yes, I'm trying, Margolo. Try to jump over I'm, I'm the trying. Next step I'm, in I'm front trying. Of I'm telling. I'm trying my heart. Oh my god. Why won't you? Why, get jump over. Fuck. Come on, man. Oh. There we go. Yeah, the controls and abilities in this game are locked out until you listen to every single word that Margolo says about that particular ability. Oh, that sucks. And you can't skip it. Not in the mood. Oh my god, this is phallic. This, I'm still playing a kid's game, right? And climbing just looks, oh my god, it looks simply wrong. If you stand on top of the tree trunk, I'll show you how to throw more accurately. <laughs> more accurate, you bitch. Look, I don't even need to aim. Shut your pie hole beak face. I know what I'm doing. I've reached the top, Margolo! Oh. Ah, calm down. Oh, jeez, calm down, Stuart. It's not that amazing. <sighs> Crazy fuck. Ah, this here, this, this is game design. I'm trying. Right, why am I getting an advert for Aer Lingus, which is Republic of Ireland's Air, Air, Airlines, when I live in England? Makes no sense, that does it? Trying to activate the next tutorial, but the text is scrolling slower than her speaking speed, so she finishes her last point, but I can't continue until the unskippable text box stops moving. And we finish off with a lovely bit of advice from our favourite residential beak face. Good things sure do come in small packages. Oh, I'm sure they do. Okay, I will admit that tutorial was a little painful, but hey, I know exactly what I'm doing now, so time to pick a stage and explore. And no more random tutorials pop up from here on out. You can just enjoy the game for what it is now. Fantastic. And there is a lot to enjoy here. Yeah. Like I said, it's a collectathon platform like Mario 64. Each stage has six rings to find. You need any 30 rings in any order in any of the stages to reach the end, giving you total control, like Mario 64. And they all have many ways of getting them, whether it be finding a special hiding place for it, collecting 60 out of 80 cat biscuits and going to a cat bowl to deposit them, 
them, completing two random mini games in each stage, opening a golden chest with a hidden golden key, or finding six Stuart face blocks with dead soulless piercing eyes that then form a secret path to another ring. It relies heavily on exploration with its challenges and the ways that you traverse the stage through switches to other places, and the levels aren't too big, making none of the missions feel linear, tedious, or boring. Which I suppose is good for a four inch tall mouse, you can't have it too big. And the controls are really good, maybe a little bit solid and less free flowing than Crash Bandicoot or Mario, but it works. So, the controls are a bit rigid, is basically saying. That's what it was back then, though, back, back in the PS1 era. The, the, they haven't really perfected um, uh, free flowing controls yet. I would, I'd say they didn't really perfect it until the PS2 era, really. That's, that's how I think, anyway. Works and it works well. Stuart can run around freely, double jump, climb around the levels, monkey swing, sprint whenever he wants to, and mm. throw items or tailspin right. to deal with enemies. Recording this early in the morning, guys. That's why I just. That's why I'm tired. All right. I've had about four hours sleep. You guys, if you watch my videos, know I don't sleep. I don't sleep at night at all. With some enemies only being attackable with each corresponding attack. It's solid groundwork here. If anything, I guess sometimes it's a little too simplistic. The missions don't really spice up in any of the stages and it feels a little repetitive on occasion, especially with the voice acting that cycles through the same exact lines every time you do anything. Excellent hunting, Stuart. You have found a face block. Yes! I did it! How can I get enough cat biscuits for someone to trade your body for another ring? Yes! And there's nothing. Oh, God, that really. That really hit my ear, that did. Ow! Ow! Caddy! new or imaginative here whatsoever to really sink yourself into. It's a very safe game, it takes no risks, and it does the basics. Very well though, it's not a bad thing. It's just definitely made more with kids in mind, which is very easy to fuck up by being too patronising and pandering looking at you three to one smurf. So you gotta give credit where credit is due, and this game does have its moments of not only decent level design, but also difficulty. Yeah! Woo! What's so exciting, mouse? I found the golden key! Now all I have to do is take the key to the golden suitcase! What an adventure this is turning out to be! Right... Stuart, are you ill? As you yeah. go on, the platforming and level design gets a little bit more treacherous and hard to stomach. You find less and less health the further you get, the enemies get more aggressive and force you to be more careful overall as a result, and even the minigames get trickier with shorter time limits and crazier shit to do. Ah yes, the minigames. This game has them. Not too often, mind, but they're still rather... meh when they happen. They're all pretty easy to be yeah. fair, but that still doesn't mean I can't complain about them. The vehicle stages, for instance, aren't great. All of them are stuck on a predetermined path, and apart from the plane, the controls are garbage. The boat stage bounces all over the damn place and steers 90 degrees if you hold down the button too long and what is this you call this visuals it looks like we glitched and clipped underneath the fucking game and the car oh wow it sucks it's easy again and you can't crash but the controls are just the same jagged and so i was just checking if my phone was charging it is sorry heavy and is not fun to do. At least, like I said, the plane's good and the skateboard is okay, but someone please explain these fucking skateboarding physics. Uh. Oh, I don't know why, but that kind of makes me feel sick and makes me laugh at the same time. The other mini games involve cursor shooting, where you have to protect yourself from enemies that deduct your points and hit every other target on the screen before the time runs out, and the other involves racing an insect through goalposts, and I have to admit, firstly, I actually really appreciate a sprint button in a 3D platformer. We need more things like this in these yeah. kinds of games. I used it all the time. And these races are actually pretty damn tricky. I always struggled with these as a kid because you have to be perfect with where you run, where you jump since it slows you down, figuring out shortcuts at the best times, and every time I even tried today, I only just win by an inch. Nice bit of feeling that I truly earned a ring there. Like it. I also felt like I earned a ring by totally fucking climbing the sliding rail backwards. <laughs> Up top, I'm a fucking boss. And don't get me started on throwing things at this crow. It never fails to make me laugh. <laughs> The music though is surprisingly good, very jazzy, upbeat, catchy and well played, especially love the challenge theme. And visually the game's not outstanding but it looks appealing enough and gets to the point lovely and yeah. nicely. It's also very sweet and charming to see budget cuts like this. Why not just animate the CD tray going into the player? Why the graphical squeezing? Stuff like this for older games I find adorable, it might have been a miss- I am coming to you live with a breaking announcement. This winter, don't forget to use Lucid site but it does show you how- yeah, Upper GX. Yeah, Upper GX. Oh, oh, around Halloween they got it was Eric, Eric, Eric Andre. Whenever you load up Upper GX, it goes Upper GX. <sighs> How far we've come. But, uh, uh, well. Look, he goes down in a raincoat, and now he's changed that tire. Wow, who even are you, magic man? Oh God, wait, wait. Stuart Little is a little mouse. Hmm. Wow. 
Okay, Little Mouse, Mickey Mouse, Mickey Blaine, David Blaine. Oh, holy shit, mind blown, juice everywhere. And since this game was released only a small time after the movie came out, you of course collect many movie clips in the game, and there are lots here. It's pretty much like owning a Best of Scenes DVD. It's pretty amazing for the time, honestly. You get one at the start and end of each stage, and you get to find a hidden one in each stage, which also has the most amazing noise when you find it. You just better hope you loved Stuart Little back in the day though, like me. Seriously, I fucking loved these movies as a kid. Because 100% completion just awards you with more movie clips. A fantastic reward for me and others that loved the movie and couldn't own it on VHS or DVD at that point. But if that means nothing to you, then you get... Bragging rights? On Stuart Little 2? I have to start wearing a cup. <sighs> Oh, oh, thanks, game. Thank you. That's lovely. That's just wonderful. Now I've got to carry on with an image stuck in my head of Stuart Little's Little Stuart. It's also lovely how the clips all coincide with the stages. They all thematically fit and make sense with what you're doing in the game. It's little things like that and the solid foundation nature of the game overall that gives you the impression that actual thought, effort, and heart went into making this amongst other movie tie-in games. And for that, I can applaud it. Another thing I love is how in the sewer stage, whenever Stuart falls into the sewer water, Margolo constantly comes down to rescue him and is always like, oh, for fuck's sake, just stop. And so you get all the rings, make your way to the end of the game, and Falcon is waiting for you. Okay, well, he was mentioned like at the beginning of the game and never built up again, and he's the only boss in the game, so he's honestly not even slightly a threat, but it's nice to see how the gameplay changes up a little bit here. Using risk and reward, you can now freely move your plane around the stage, and you have to decide if you can risk losing health for grab- Oh, I hate bosses like that. It would have been easier if you just had, like, Falcon coming in to attack you. And then you have to like shoot projectiles at him or something like that. I mean, that would have been easier. Having the reward of battery power to charge up and ram into the back of Falcon. Not too difficult, but yes, a little bit challenging. A nice change of pace and nice mechanics for a boss set in a plane that doesn't have any guns involved. It's pretty unique, honestly. You're trying to grind his ass into the plane blades. I mean, what could be better than that? Oh, I don't know. How about exploding flowers? Whoa. Okay. I can totally accept that Stuart is a walking, talking mouse that wears jeans and that no one in the little family questions the fact that Marglo can actually talk despite it being made clear in the first movie that Stuart's talking animal case was quite odd and that Snowbell only talks to other animals and not humans implying that they can't be heard by humans so technically the only creature that can be heard is Stuart but despite that I've got to say I can't suspend my disbelief on this exploding flowers is far too far-fetched for me and that's a funny joke because Falcon's a bird, Margalore's a bird and Farfetch is a fucking Pokemon bird thank you ladies and gentlemen I'll be here all so overall <laughs> what the hell this game gets salvaged hey Lovely. Haven't done that for a while. It's not an incredible game or even a very, very good game in any sense of the word, and it's very safe in its execution, but if you look at it like this, Stuart Little was more a kid-sided family movie series as it was anyway, so if you look at the game like that, and its intended demographic, young children, uh. it does its job really damn well. Yeah. This is how you introduce the inexperienced or poorly skilled kids into the world of 3D collectathon platformers. Not pandering, not really any hand-holding, not too long, not too hard, but with just the right balance of difficulty and reward that makes you want to keep going, explore more, and just enjoy the levels. Held up surprisingly well. I, I liked it. <laughs> the game didn't really go to heaven, the illusion is fucking gone! <laughs> Hi everyone and thanks so much for watching this video, but before I go I'd like to thank Gamescrabber for sponsoring today's episode, where if you head to the first lines of- yeah, We're just gonna skip to you. Bye. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you don't forget I will implant an image of Stuart Little's little Stuart directly into your nightmares and that's no threat, that's a promise. I swear on Hugh, Hugh Laurie's American accent. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, <clears throat> I've, I've, not, I've, not, I've not played that um, a Stuart Little 2 game but it looks like it could be actually an okay little game actually. So let me know in the comments below if you have played this game or not, if you've seen the movie and all this lot. Uh, my reaction is, very safe video by Caddy. Um, th this was his older style because this was released in what? March 13th, 2016. So we're coming up to eight years old. You can tell it's his older style. I, like Caddy doesn't like his older content, his older videos, but I do love his older content. I still think he's great. I think for me, when it comes to game reviews, he's up there for for, what, for being one of the funniest. Um, and if Caddy doesn't like his own content, it's a shame, really, because he's, he's very talented at what he does. So, alright then, guys. 
Uh, that'll be it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. If you are new, do check out all the other content from me. And I'll see you guys on my next video. So until then, have a good one. Look after yourself. Take care. See you guys in a bit. Love you all. Have a good one. Peace. Bye-bye.